and let us all that we can to build a better future. So, Daniel, are you ready to hear something that's totally crazy? Sure, why not? So, what does Trump's Make America Great Again, Elon Musk, and Barack Obama have in common? Uh, the news likes talking about them to make money. True. And I guess, oh my God, Obama, ha- Barack Obama has gone full mega. Uh, man, just no, like I, Elon you know Musk. Crazy? You know, it's crazy to think about the number of references to that's just like Hitler have gone really low, right? As, hey, that's just like Trump have risen. <laughs> well, you know, what's really funny, though, is that, OK, so here's the thing, folks. We're going to be sharing this video. This video is from The Guardian, and it's more or less it's not Barack Obama going full on MAGA. He's. He's actually going after the quote unquote SJWs and social justice warriors and cancel culture, telling people to calm down. On the one hand, well, I of course, Kit. Well, don't you know that if you say anything that hurts the people that are proponents of cancel culture, you're just Hitler. I mean, it's just that that's the math. There's no nuance. Anyone yeah. that goes against them is a terrible, reprehensible person that doesn't have to be listened to, which means they're the only people that get to speak. Isn't that really, really, really ironic? Ah, uh, Daniel, I don't like your tone. And you should be censored uh, right away. It's just like, you know, the, the scene in uh, Monty Python, Life of Brian, when they're just stoning the guy. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's that's all this is. It's just like, how do, how do we do stoning? How do we burn witches in the modern day? I know. Cancel yeah. culture. <laughs> what? I just said the food tastes as good as Jehovah. Stop it. You're making it worse for yourself. I'm making it worse. worse. I'm going to die. Jehovah. 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 <laughs> You know, this this idea of purity and you're never compromised and you're always politically woke and all that stuff, you should get over that quickly. <laughs> the, world, the world is messy. There are ambiguities. Yep. People who do really good stuff have flaws. People who you are perfect. fighting. No problem. I just opened up Twitter just to see if I can see anything and immediately popped up from Revolutionary Blackout Network. I just have to read it. What's up? He literally was responding to the exact same video, just opened up like that. Uh, he said, uh, this is essentially Obama melting down because young people keep calling him a war criminal. Yeah, and he is. Here's the thing. And shout out to Marvin Vegas who tipped us $2. Brock Obama, the drone king. Yeah, that's right, Trump. Obama has a uh, more of a higher record of using the drones. And again, by the way, folks, Nobel Peace Prize winner Barack Obama. And he's probably he's probably he's probably his his feelings are hurt. May love their kids. And you know share certain things with you and 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 I think that one danger I see among young people, particularly on college camps, is Malia and I talk about this. Okay, so see, you gotta watch yourself, young people. Watch your tone. No, I mean I can't. I mean I can't tell if it's Hitler up there or Obama. Since <gasps> the SJW. That's oh. <laughs> sorry, Dan. I don't mean to laugh. I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry. Can you repeat what you said? Because what I what I just see right here is fucking hilarious, and I'm wondering if you could see it too. But can you repeat what you just said? Oh, I was saying that every SJW watching this is going. I can't tell if I'm looking at Obama or Hitler right now. Okay, so notice the words up there, Obama Foundation Summit, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if you just keep the first three letters, O-F-S, oh, for fuck's sakes, <laughs> just really look at it. You see? I see it. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. By the way, I love, I love that his campaign logo, the little change icon is all grayed out. Like, no, we're not yeah. doing that anymore. We're done yeah. changing. Done no changing. Keep, 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 keep the status quo. Keep the status it, quo. It's so funny that, um, again, it's like we were at a point where I, I, I feel like I've been trying to understand this for like over a year and trying to put into words how I feel about all this. But we have this like extremist puritanical group that is getting smaller now. Yeah. I think everyone is starting to stop being as worried and cancel culture is less effective. 
I mean, like even even um no I'm not, I get his name right, but even the, the the Twitter leaks, like NBC and all of them are trying to shut down uh, Weiss and uh, Taibi, and it's everyone's kind of like eh. So I think that the fact that ironically the fact that Obama's making this point right now means like five people have done calculations somewhere in the background that this is the political right thing to do. Ironically, it is the political right thing to do as anyway, but eh. but yeah, look, well, look, I mean, I think we've both seen firsthand just how pointless a lot of those activist groups are. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if that hurts people's feelings, but look, Daniel, I did a lot of coverage of uh, people protesting Trump and they'd be one area of the city by me by daily center or somewhere else. And then they pro they'll go to Trump tower. And again, Trump towers across the Chicago river. Trump Tower, that's not even owned by Trump. It just has his freaking name on it. And they all go there, and their leaders would say, blah, 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 blah. And then they all go home. Like, it's I, honestly, I think it was probably a form of mas- masturbation for all those activists who are just wasting everyone's time. And I uh, also really quickly want to just let everyone know, in condition to this, I'm just also sort of scrolling through a relevant twit, a Twitter. Um, Washington Post lost 500,000 subscribers in the last year, and they're doing layoffs. Good. Good. Fuck the Washington Post. They they they're they were smearing Eliza Blue, who is a uh, again I got to be careful with the words, but she is a survivor advocate. Um, and again I got to be careful with the words because YouTube will hit us with them. Uh, we'd be more than happy to interview Eliza Blue because they did a, a a smear piece on her, and it is uh, unjust. And I have to say she's doing fantastic work on social media, especially protecting people there. So I mean she's doing fantastic work. If not following her on Twitter, please do so. Now let's hear the rest of this jag off talk. Yeah, it goes to school with my daughter. Rock Obama. Um, but I, do <laughs> I thought get he said that when you said that. <laughs> among certain young people, and this is accelerated by social media, there is this sense sometimes of the way of me making change is to be as judgmental as possible about other people. And that's enough. Like if I tweet or hashtag about how you didn't do something right or used the word wrong verb or then I can say feel sir. pretty good about myself. Pronouns. No, By the way, I, I, I just I say, called you like, out. Pause it again. <laughs> yeah. The just the irony that Obama's the one. Like, okay, I know we're all taking it from like he's a war criminal and probably should be in jail anyway. Angle, and I'm gonna we're gonna say we're, that's gonna still be true. But I'm also gonna say from the other angle, it's funny how the guy who was attacked by SJWs on the right a huge amount during his presidency. They're like. That's the guy we need to make this message happen. I would love to see Joe Biden try to say what Obama's saying. That's probably why Obama's saying it. Is they're like, we don't trust Joe. He, no, don't screw you know, it up. Yeah. Oh, are you kidding, Dan? That's an understatement of. That's the understatement of the year. Yeah, he will. You know what they should have done? They should have brought on an SJW. They should have had a beer together. Yeah, a Remember beer that? summit. Oh god. Yeah, yeah. beer god. summit. No, no, we'll do it. It's a. Um, it's not the. It's the. Uh, it's the sangria summit. No, oh yes, or mimosas. The mimosas. Mimosa summit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Great. The mimosa summit. But hey folks, you 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 poor people get no mimosas. <laughs> Let me get on TV. <laughs> Watch my show. Watch Gronish. <laughs> um you know, that's not that's not activism. That that's not bringing about change. You know, it, it, Trust me, Barack Obama. I you know, but did a, the thing that gets me is he's right about what he's saying. Yeah, it's no, just he is. so funny hearing him be the one to say it. Because it's either he was attacked in that respect when he was president, but then he also participated in bolstering up this whole thing with the Democratic Party. So mm-hmm. he created this, was a victim of this, and now he's telling everyone not to engage in it. You know, I also want to – and I'm glad you brought that up because I want to pull up this tweet here about where – activists and organizers clearly get out of hand um daniel you know we've we've tried to interview dsa and we have we've interviewed people from dsa before on DSA show, but it wasn't the worst it was no the socialist, no a socialist group that was yeah, really uh, that was DSA, the hardest okay yeah uh, but i will say this even then dsa what, well, no, was, i mean what, at least with the dsa worst? they did interviews with us they yeah. let us in they let us talk to high-ranking people. Mm-hmm. We were literally like doing interviews with the socialism uh, conference every year, and someone would try to literally stop us yeah. from filming. Remember that one person that walked into the shot and was like, do you know who these people are? And he's like, yeah, and just ruined our entire take. 
Yeah, like, no, I literally that. the socialism conferences um, are worse than trying to do interviews at MAGA rallies. Like we were at both of those. I can tell you for certain that yeah. theirs was a lot harder. Yeah. PSA was difficult, but not yeah. that level of a roadblock. But I but I have noticed this about DSA, and that is they are still a pain. Because look, check this out. Standing with rail workers is considered ultra left. Mm -hmm. If you were actually trying to, and again, shout to Jimmy Dore for tweeting this out. If you're trying to discredit the DSA, you couldn't do a better job. And what did they do? Well, DSA Northstar, openly organizing your ultra left cult within DSA is an expendable offense. Entryism is forbidden by our bylaws. Disagreeing with ultra left positions on things is not an expendable offense in a democratic social organization. And they're trying to expel out. So let me, let me clarify my previous statements. I realized that wasn't it was time wise not the right statement. Back in 2016 and and in 2018, yeah, that's 20, when we had a good time with DSA. Yeah, 2016. Not 20. not since I'm gonna separate that from post pandemic. Yes, exactly, exactly. So again, shout out to Kasama Swan. But Dan, there's always a consequence or repercussion of the Democrats once again failing with their messages and even with Barack Obama himself, because let's face it, they always successfully destroyed Bernie Sanders and the progressive movement the squad and all that other stuff, because let's face it, Bernie was never going to fight. But I want to play this final video as a final note. And that is on Fox news of all places, young voters, less enthusiastic about Democrats. What could they have possibly gotten wrong? Shout again, the case study QB. We also found the study about younger voters voting less, for Democrats. I'll show you, I know you got a whiteboard. Let me show you what we found. For 2022, 53% uh, of those Americans aged 30 and under uh, nationwide voted for the Democratic House candidate. Compare that to two years prior, where it was 61% with Joe Biden. Then in 2018, it was 64% for Democrats. So the trend is not their friend. What do you see in this, Carl? Yeah, well, my whiteboard put it a little bit more elegantly because I started with 2018 and worked my way to 2020. But think about it, 11 point drop among oh, man, the, the talking. support among under under 30 year old voters and a 7 percent increase for Republicans. Remember, one of the things the White House staff went out and told the press after the president decided he was going to wipe out half a trillion dollars in student loan debt without any statutory authority to do specifically that was that they would increase their support among young voters in the November election. First of all, I thought it was incredibly politically crass to you we're going to take a half a trillion dollars of taxpayer money and use it to try and buy bigger turnout among young voters. But that didn't work because they dropped even uh, over 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 two years ago when the, in the presidential race, they dropped by eight and the Republicans picked up by five. But over the four year period, you're right, down 11 for Democrats, up seven for Republicans. Not a good trend line uh, for the for the Democratic so-called emerging majority. So what I want to add on to there is, look, the, the Democrats did have a high turnout of G Gen Z voters. But the reason why is because there is this idea of, oh, student aid, we were going to, you know, people were going to help us out. We were actually going to get something to help out young people. Something was going to be done to help out the young people, especially those that were struggling with uh, student debt, those that were struggling with the fact that, you know, it's, it, it was, it, 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 it was, it was, it was another campaign lie. Uh, Daniel, I want to give you the final word. Again, um, I don't really have much to add. I think you covered it real well. I think we're again in a situation where, I don't know what's going to happen exactly, but I know we're going to go through and that we're in the middle. Like this, I mean, this goes back to what I said a couple of years ago, even right now, people living right now, the period that we're in is going to have a very important view in the history of the world in like 50 years in the future. At that point, when we know what, how it, it ends, everyone's going to look back at this time and go, why were they acting that way? Why is everything working this way? Why? And it's because nothing makes sense because everything makes sense in a way that isn't for everyone. Uh, any action that's taken in America is more power to corporations, less rights to people. Mm -hmm. And it's like all these little pieces are going to be brushed aside for a big picture that we can't exactly see right now. And I don't know yeah. what more I can add. You did a good job. Once again, uh, folks, if you believe the lies of Barack Obama, if you believe that, you know, the hope and change was actually going to be 
something that was going to help out working class families or, you know, you had your seat at the table. I'm so sorry you got lied to. I'm so, so sorry. But um, if you vote Democrat or if you vote Republican, you're a sucker.